And this is a deal that you said uh, you're going to make how much on? That one, I think we're around 37. So that's awesome. Kyle, how much money did you put down up front to secure the deal with this with this owner? One hundred dollars. Uh, I'm excited about this because this is something that I've been doing for for quite some time now. Uh, lease option, real estate investing. Some of you may know it as rent to own. And so, what I wanted to do is I wanted to put together a a series really of a variety of, of topics under the lease option umbrella. So tonight we're gonna to be talking about how to do no money down deals. And then next week we're gonna be talking about how to scale without the banks, because those can be two separate things for sure. And um, there's four other topics, which hopefully you've seen and hopefully you'll join back in uh, the coming Mondays to join us. And so as I as I was preparing for tonight, I was thinking about, okay, well, what's What's, what's the kind of the core uh, topic, the core problem, if you will, and that was really about uh, scaling your, your portfolios uh, without any of your own money. So essentially doing no money down deals. And this is a big topic for me because it's, it's how I quit my day job in, in 2010. It's, um, it's how I scaled quickly. If you've read some of my blog posts, I went from uh, five to 45 doors in five years using other people's money. And, you know, I was a C minus D plus student in high school. And so this isn't rocket science. You don't have to be an engineer to do this. You don't have to be a, you know, you don't have to have a higher education to do this. It's, it's math and it's, it's working hard at it. And so, I'm excited also tonight because Kyle Barth, one of my students, is going to be on with us tonight. And Kyle and his partner have had a ton of success in the last three years. And uh, they're going to, uh, Kyle's going to share some of his story about, you know, how he first started with lease options and then kind of where that's taken him, as well as you can ask Kyle some questions. First of all, you know, why does this topic interest you? Why does doing no money down deals interest you? And so, some of the responses were, uh, I've used up all my money. I've used up the equity in my property. I don't have any more cash to put down to acquire more properties. The banks are saying no. You know, I've, I've got bad credit. I can't get any more mortgages. Uh, some of the other reasons were, you know, wanting to scale and know that they need to get to the next level. And that's where, where creative financing comes in. One of my coaches said to me at one point, he says, the sooner you learn to stop using your own money to scale your real estate, the better you're going to get and the faster you're going to grow. I didn't understand what that meant at the time because in my mind, I only knew how to do, you know, come up with, you know, what was 10% at the time, right? Back in the late 2000s uh, and get a mortgage. Uh, and mortgage rules are always changing. Uh, you know, one of the questions is how do we deal with real estate or excuse me, how do we deal with interest rates, all this sort of stuff. So we'll tackle that a little bit later. So those were some of the key things. I want to grow. I want to scale. How do I do this? Kyle, if you're there, I want to, I want to welcome you on. And um, Kyle and I were chatting a little bit earlier today, but I was curious to know from Kyle, how and why did you get involved in this strategy? Perfect. I'm going to leave my camera off. Just uh, again, I'm, I'm on the road uh, back from a family trip here. So just for reception reasons, yeah. I'll leave the camera off, but awesome. thanks, thanks for, for joining us. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me here today. So um, why did we get into this? So uh, my business partner, whom you mentioned there, Dave, Dave and I both, uh, you know, we, we had good jobs working as engineers, um, working hard for somebody else. And we wanted to create something that was our own and uh, something that we were in charge of. And, and when we were putting in a bunch of overtime or, or working hard, it was for something that we were building. Um, so yeah, that's ultimately why we got into real estate. And then uh, if you're talking the rental in specific, while we, we were doing one of our early on projects, which was a flip and the market kind of went a little sideways on us. We had a deal fall through on an offer. So we actually found rental to be 
a secondary exit strategy. And that's when we were introduced to you. I gave you a call to ask you a little bit about what it was about. And that's when I really learned the power of rent owns. And um, it turned something that could have been basically a, a loss or a net negative into a profit of about $47,000 on that one deal itself. Wow. So That's awesome. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's fantastic. So um, that's how you got introduced to it. So um, now you you got in for a specific uh, problem solving, which is a whole nother subject, which is totally fantastic because uh, really real estate investing is about problem solving, whether if it's people need a place to rent um, and you're solving their problem with, with a nice house or if people are trying to get into home ownership using the rent own strategy, or if it's investors like us who are trying to scale, but without banks, right? Using a lease option. And just so you know, lease option, rent own, basically the same thing. Lease option is the, the, the legal name. Rent own is kind of the street name, especially for people looking to get into home, uh, home ownership. So you'll see those terms interchange uh, throughout the night, but just so, so you know. But yeah, so you were pr essentially problem solving when you got into it. So tell us when you, when you when you solved that problem, what kind of did you realize at that point about lease options? Well, what we realized was to flip it, that's where basically, you know, we put sweat equity into the property and we were trying to capitalize on that by selling it immediately. And as I mentioned the 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 market had just slipped slightly, you know. I mean, uh, a property that was going to be worth around three hundred thousand, maybe it was only worth two ninety, right? So that was part of our profit margin. We overspent a little, so essentially our profit margin just kind of disappeared. But then, the things you realize when you actually look at rent on and, and how it's structured is, you get the principal recapture on a mortgage. So we we went and we took a mortgage on the property after it it had been done as a cash flip. We we took a a mortgage and we were able to capture most of what we had put in and then we had also partnered with an investor so there was a little bit of investor funds left in the deal um which you know that's fine that's part of the debt servicing the project but paying that mortgage down every month builds equity over time um and then if we were to have tried to just rent it out as a normal rental the market would not have given us a rental rate where we would have been net positive on a monthly basis but because of the way the lease option is structured, there's the credit fund payments every month on top of that. So those credit fund payments put us in a positive cash flow position every month um, because we were getting that on top of just the market rent. Uh, and then also we were able to appreciate the, the sale price, uh, you know, looking forward three years from that particular date. And being in our market, Regina, we were seeing a, a positive appreciation it was just poor market timing when we tried to sell the flip it wasn't so much that the market was going uh in a negative trend it was just poor timing so those three things appreciation cash flow because of the credit fund and then principal recapture when you look at the culmination of all that that's where we were able to like i said make forty-seven thousand instead of just basically breaking even on selling it right away right you you guys started shifting your focus a bit away from flips and into doing more lease options. Yes, definitely. Um, we saw it, we saw it as an opportunity. Um, it's, it's a model that obviously makes a lot of sense. I, I just kind of went over three of the main reasons from a financial perspective. So financially it's a great model. Um, and then the other thing that we really realized is and we love this is it's every deal is a win, win, win. We have it built into our company structure. It's, it's our core values that we look for the win, win, win in every deal. So we're able to help people that are looking to sell their property that potentially can't, you know, through normal means on the MLS, or maybe they want to, you know, just save some realtor fees or whatever the case may be. We're able to help them sell that property through our program. And it actually puts way more money in their in their pocket by doing so. Um, I don't know if you have any examples later on showing exactly what that looks like, but there's, um, yeah, I mean, we, we were able to show sellers, uh, you know, something of 30 to 50,000 
in their pocket versus just selling with a realtor right away. Right. And then of course we have our rental clients, our tenant buyers who uh, they're just looking for somewhere to live and they can't qualify on their own right now. Mm -hmm. So, so we're able to help them um, by putting them into a place to call home today while they work on credit or work on building their down payment to qualify on their own in the future. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, this is uh, this whole topic where it's it's just kind of taking on a whole life of of its own because essentially what you did was you turned a flip into into a rent own. Uh, The tenants uh, will have skin in the game because they're putting down a much higher uh, deposit than just a damage deposit, right? Five, ten, twenty thousand dollars. If you're like me, you get the tenants to look after your repairs up to five hundred or a thousand dollars, for instance. Uh, you've got no vacancy costs, you've got no staging costs, and there's no realtor fee at the end when you sell directly to the to the tenant. That's that's a huge win. Um, so I wanted to touch on that, but I'm curious to hear. Tell us about your guys' first no money down deal. How did you how did you put that together? Our first no money down deal. Well, um, I guess I'll talk about one of the first rent owns we did. We've done different things. Like we did flips where we're using, you know, OPM investor funds and stuff like that. But Mm -hmm. should we, I could talk about our first sandwich lease. Uh, Sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So uh, we started marketing uh, for leads. We were looking for people that were looking to sell their property, be it tired and frustrated landlords or, um, again, even just people that are looking to sell for market value, but, uh, maybe they just want to save some realtor fees. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had somebody come to us. It was, uh, this nice gentleman, Sheldon, and he, uh, he had recently gone through a divorce and this was a rental property that him and his wife both owned. And they had a tenant that actually trashed the place a little bit. So they were not wanting to take care of it anymore. They really were just trying to get rid of their headaches. So what we did is we came in and we, I strategically gave them, or I, I gave them a strategic list of renovations to complete. So they actually did complete them on their own. Um, so it was something that we didn't have to put any money into, but I told them, look, as is, I can, I can pay 175,000 or you do this $18,000 worth of work and I can pay you 205. So it put a little bit of equity in their pocket by doing the rentals because I knew what the what that would do to the appreciation of the, of the property itself. Mm-hmm. So we worked with him and um, he's, I mean, we're, oh boy, we got about a year left, not even a year left on that one. And uh, they've been super happy. They, they really don't have to do anything. You know, as you alluded to there, our tenant buyer takes care of the, the repairs and maintenance of the property. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we tell her, <laughs> We tell the owners of the properties that we, we do rent owns with that uh, all you got to do is cash checks. But the truth is they don't even have to do that because it's, it's an e-transfer that <laughs> they just got to click a button. So it's super easy on their part. And um, we, we've worked with many since. And the gratitude that they show us is it's so rewarding to get that from them. Um, so, yeah, ultimately, somebody else continued to own the property. Okay. We placed our tenant buyer in it. Um, they pay us monthly and then we pay, you know, the rent directly to the owner and, uh, yeah, it's just been a fantastic way to do some deals. That's awesome. So, I mean, that's a classic, no money down deal. Uh, Kyle did talk about a sandwich lease. That's kind of the technical term of what he just described, but we won't worry about the technical. I think it's just important to recognize that, um, Kyle and his partner got into this property, uh, with, with having someone else hold the financing. So Kyle, how much money did you put down up front to secure the deal with this, with this owner? $100. Okay, cool. Where'd you learn that? <laughs> <laughs> Through your program. <laughs> okay. So a hundred bucks, you now controlled the property and, and you got the owner to do some, upgrades to the property, which is great. That's not always possible, but that's fantastic. Um, real quick, how did you find this owner? 
you said you started putting out leads? Yeah, I believe. So we created our, our company's Katie properties and we created a Facebook page mm -hmm. and uh, we just started doing some posts on Facebook and um, we did some advertising on Facebook and that's ultimately how it started. And um, you know what? I, I got to backtrack a little, that one's a little older. That one was actually a referral from our realtor. So okay. that one would have been uh, just really through our network, our mm -hmm. realtor, we work very closely with. And this particular, uh, this particular gentleman had called him to try and sell it, but they were upside down on their mortgage. So they owed, I think, 212,000 at the time when we were introduced to them. And as I, as I had said earlier, it was worth maybe 175,000. So we were able to have him, like I said, do those specific upgrades and then our price to him was 205,000. But again, that's in three years. So right. after the three years, his principal, his mortgage would have been paid down by about, I think we figured about $28,000. Okay. So really he went from, you know, I, I do the math 212 minus 28 puts him at uh, 180 something, 184, mm -hmm. if my math is correct. So we will buy it at 205 uh, this coming February. Right. And he will only owe 184 at that time. And so otherwise he would have been a lot of cash out of pocket to do so. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this is a deal that you said, uh, you're going to make how much on that one? I think we're around 37, 37. Okay. Yeah. Over three so, years. So that's awesome because obviously you've, you've put a bunch of time and, and energy into this, but essentially you added onto your portfolio of properties, this property with a hundred dollars that generates monthly cash flow, as well as your, your gross profit on it is going to be 37,000 after three years. That's correct. It actually will be a little bit more because we had one tenant buyer back out. And so okay. we were able to bring another one in on a shorter term. Okay. But then of course we, we were able to collect the 5,000. We, we in our company have, have chosen 5,000 as the minimum deposit okay. and initial sum that our, our tenant buyers pay. So we were able to collect that again. And the credit fund that we had collected from the previous tenant buyer um, was they had obviously forfeited that mm -hmm. based on our contract setup and stuff. So it actually will end up being more because of the turnover, which, Again, we're looking for the win-win. We want everyone to be successful, but yeah. life happens and sometimes it doesn't. So, yeah. Um, yeah. For sure. What's the, uh, what's the most uh, um, option payment up front have you received from a tenant buyer? We actually just did one in June. Uh, they took, uh, we, we bought this one with an investor Mm -hmm. uh, so this one would have been a tenant first deal. And I, I know that that's kind of the technical term again, but, uh, they gave us 19,000 up front. Okay. That's awesome. So even though you've got to hold that aside for the tenant buyer, that's part of your profit already. Absolutely. It was. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, that's exactly it. Okay. So. For those of you on on this call, can we like a hundred dollars down? Is that is that money in the deal or is that essentially no money down? What do you what do you think? Money in the deal, thumbs up or, or no money down? <laughs> yeah, I I'd agree with you. A hundred bucks. Um, so the way that I I do it, and I think Kyle does the same way, is we write a check for a hundred dollars because. Now the deal becomes a, uh, a legally binding contract. If you just give, um, give $100 cash, it's not so much traceable. But if you send an e-transfer or a check, it's traceable. Now it's a binding deal. You've got an interest in the property. So I, I, just, I love stories like this because, you know, look at that one deal in isolation and go, okay, how many times... How many times can you duplicate that? Right? When it's 
Exactly. I love it. I love it. It's, it's, it's endless. And this is what happened to me back in 2010 when I did my, my first deal. Um, it was, it was kind of like this, but different. I got 20 K down up front and I got an investor, my very first investor I, by accident. I wasn't even looking for investors. This investor said, Hey, I love what you're doing. Can we invest with you? Long story short, this, this, you know, it took a couple months, but I found a property. I mean, I looked at many, many, many properties, presented a handful of properties to these investors, got them to buy this one, found a tenant buyer, put it in. And, you know, uh, my numbers on my first one, you know how when you do something and then you do it again and again, and then you look back at your first one, it's like, how did I do that so well? I had no clue what I was doing. And on, on, on that deal, my total profit on that um, over five years was $59,000. And I put $100 into it up front. My investors also made um, a little bit more than that. But there's, there's so many different ways that you can structure these deals. Because, you know, Kyle talks about, you know, actually his first one was, was through a referral. And it happened to be a realtor. Um, and then he got another one where, where, where it was like an owner who was trying to sell They they're having a tough time. Um, and then you can find partners, right? So there's, there's two main ways that I do no money down deals. And the first way is, um, what I call tired and frustrated landlords. And that's a very broad term, but there's lots of owners of properties out there that are tired of dealing with tenants or toilets and they want someone to solve their problem. And so that's where educated investors like us can come in because we can solve their problem. And as Kyle said, we can make it a win, win, win. And so once you start duplicating this right after that first light went on for me, it's like, I can start doing this again and again. I mean, if, if those guys, will invest, you know, $50,000 in me and they'll get a mortgage and, you know, we're three months into it, it's going great and they're happy. How many more people do you think I could get to do that? And just a side note on that, those first investors were a referral machine for, for me. I think um, probably 10 other investors came in because of that first couple over the first, like over the next three years. And it just kept, you know, duplicating that. So when I look at these tired and frustrated landlords, and, and like I said, that, that's a, a broad term because I work with some landlords who really aren't that frustrated and they might not be that tired, but they're looking for a creative exit strategy. So for example, I'm in conversation with an investor here in Winnipeg who you know posted in one of the groups and he's got a portfolio of 15 properties that he wants to unload over the next five years. So for those of you who've got multiple properties, you know that if you sell multiple properties all at once, you'll have a massive tax hit, right? It's capital gains tax hit. But if you sell them kind of staggered throughout uh, months and years, you'll, you know, specifically years because of, you know, the tax year, you can lower your taxes. And so my portfolio of investors like that are anybody from a tired and frustrated landlord to investor who just wants to unload their properties. And so, uh, you know, I'm still working on this deal with this guy with 15 properties. Um, I think the most I've done with any one investors uh, was 23 of his properties over the course of about three years. And it started with, with one and then I got a text from him three days later. It says, Hey, that meeting went really well. Uh, I've got four others. Are you interested? It's like, yeah. And that just kept on going. And eventually I took, you know, 23 off of his hand. So really it just, you know, you know, as someone did this before, really the sky's the limit. It's, it's, you know, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. And that's something that I've been, learning, you know, slowly throughout the process. So that's the first type of investor that I work with. The second type of investor is 
what I call um, a working professional. So someone who, who's got uh, a decent amount of down payment and they can qualify for more mortgages. Often they're working professionals who, who are very busy with their own job, but they don't wanna deal with all the mechanics of rental properties. And so, you know, if you've followed me before, you've probably seen my, my seven page Performa that talks about deals. This is, so when I get a deal together, I'll send it off to this grouping of investors, right? They're on my email list. And it started with one. And, you know, I don't know how many I've got now, like several hundred, it doesn't really matter, but it all started with one. And when I get a live deal, I send this out to them. And so basically, you know, like in today's environment, they're coming up with about 22% down of the purchase price. So 20% down, so they don't have to get CMHC and 2% for closing costs and they qualify for the mortgage, right? So an average house here in Winnipeg is about 350. So approximately 65,000 is what they need to come up for a down payment and a mortgage. And uh, basically it's a plug and play. My company, just like Kyle's, runs the deal, looks after the tenants, qualifies the tenants, all that sort of stuff. My investor on that, on that 65,000 makes about 14 or 15% a year um, rate of return of interest. And a common question I get with that is, so you tell me that your rental and clients are paying 14 or 15% interest? And no, it's not that. I mean, Kyle's already, already talked about it. There's multiple ways that our investors make money. It's mortgage pay down, it's cash flow. It's, um, uh, what else is there? There's, you, you know, very few repairs because the tenants are looking after those. Uh, there's no realtor fees and, and, and the tenant is, is, you know, you're, um, you, because they've put money down up front, there's really no vacancy costs. Cause when you run a straight rental, a buy rent and hold rental, you've got to account for vacancy loss and you've got to account for, for repairs. Right. And you know, a good rule of thumb is 10% per each. Now, lots of people will go lower. I recommend that you go a little bit higher because surprises will come. But on when you put a tenant buyer into these properties as a, as a rent own, uh, those are lower because, because of that. So you can see how an investor, how you can attract an investor to be uh, curious and want to become part of this because they're getting an excellent rate of return for essentially being, you know, turn, turnkey, hands-free rental property. So those are the two types of investors I work with. And when, when people say, you know, how do you, how do you structure these deals? What we're trying to do here is give you the very basics of that, right? You've got to find a property and you've got to find someone to finance it for you. And that can either be the person who already owns it or it can be a, like a, a friend or family member who wants to invest in you, right? Because your first, your first investor, uh, you know, likely you will have a, a, a close relationship with them already uh, because it's your first deal. But that's okay because that's how you get started. That's, I mean, the people that, that first invested with me, they, they weren't family members, but they were friends. Uh, in fact, we worked together at, you know, where I used to work and that's just kind of how it started. So, you know, there, there's going to be lots of questions about, you know, a lot more detail about the contracts. And I mean, what we're talking about here is, is really a three day course, uh, that you dive into to understand all the contracts and that sort of stuff. But I want to pause there and what sort of questions do you have? You can either open your mic or you can just uh, put it into the, to the chat field. Yeah. When you were talking about the uh, one deal where you, uh, your investor put 65,000 down. Mm -hmm. Now, how did that play into you getting the financing you needed to get the deal? So that's, that's really the driving point, David. I didn't have to get the financing. That person who came up with the 65,000 uh, also got the mortgage. 
Does that okay, make sense? So, so he was your investor then, this uh, professional. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. what we're scrolling. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that for me becomes a no money down deal because yeah. through the paperwork that I've got with that investor, I still control the property, even though their name's on title, I can, I can register my interest on title, but because of that hundred dollar check, it's a legally binding agreement that allows me to control the property, put tenants in it, uh, receive cash flow from it, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's a no money down deal because that's another, another strategy within this whole lease option strategy is that, uh, you can do flips just like this, essentially no money down. I've done, um, a whole bunch of flips where I got the owner to hold financing and some, uh, Sometimes I've gotten the owner like Kyle did to pay for the rentals. Uh, but other times I've just brought in another investor with, you know, 50 K for the rentals, but it was still no money down deal. And I just flipped the property and, and sold it at the end. I don't have any questions. I think you've done a pretty good job of making it all clear. Cool. Thanks, Karen. Appreciate that. Oh, look at that. You're, you're no longer in your vehicle. We have arrived. <laughs> awesome. So another question that came in uh, this afternoon was um, uh, from Donnie, and I'm not sure if Donnie's on the call, but um, basically Donnie's been been doing deals with with sellers for years and basically offering interest rates. So for the most part, when I'm structuring these deals, I'm not talking about interest rates with with the owners. Um, now I did talk about invest like interest rates that my, my investors coming in, purchasing properties for us, they're going to get a rate of return, but the conversation really, really has more to do with, uh, as Kyle described what the house is worth today and what we're willing to buy it off of the owner in two, three, four years. Right? So it's really about the numbers and. Yes, we, we understand that, that um, interest rates are fluctuating. I mean, in reality, you know, I've been doing this for 16 years. The, the financial markets are constantly changing. The mortgage lending rules are constantly changing, right? The latest I've heard, which isn't out yet, is that they're probably going to start lowering the cap in which investors can come into rental properties, right? Because when I got started, uh, it was 5% down and then it went to 10 and then it went to 20%. So I've heard rumblings from some, some mortgage professionals that, that the government is probably going to start dropping those rules. And so one of the challenges that a lot of people have is it, when they're trying to do their next deal is they're trying to figure out everything, but we can't figure out everything. Um, because we don't know what the banks are going to do. We don't know what, what the government's going to do. We don't know what the, the local market's going to do, right? Like I just, I just posted um, in an Ontario group, someone was asking, what's the Winnipeg market like? And so we just had a, a news article that came out last week from, I guess it was the Winnipeg Sun or whatever, that basically, you know, Manitoba is bucking uh, the trend right now, because when they dropped the interest rates, when was that early June or, or not dropped, they increased, right? This whole hot market just kind of slowed right down. Right. And I don't know if you saw it like in your area, but we did see some of that here, but this article talks about, uh, the fact that we still had a 5%, uh, month over month increase in sales in June where majority of rest of uh, major cities across Canada had a, had, had a 5% de uh, decrease. So that's a 10% spread. Who could have forecasted that? Um, not a lot of people, right? And so it's always changing. So you're always keeping your ear to the ground on, on what's going on, but you're also, you can't analyze to the point that you paralyze yourself from, from moving forward and making deals. You will make mistakes. Um, you, you just have to bounce back from it. 
And, uh, you know, it's like when you started to walk as a kid, uh, you made a ton of mistakes. My grandson, you know, he bumped his head today. And, but he's not saying, well, this walking thing's not for me. I'm going to give up, right? He's like so determined to walk because he surrounded himself with walkers. And it's the same with real estate investors. Surround yourself with other real estate investors that, that are like you uh, and where you want to be and where you want to go because you'll inspire each other, right? Uh, one of my coaches, I've been spending a lot more time in his group recently. And man, I tell you, I get off those calls and it's like, I feel like there's, like I can almost achieve anything, right? And then I jump on, on Facebook and I start the, you know, the scroll thing and I get, oh man, I'm not as good as the next person. I'm not, you know, so get off Facebook when, when that starts happening, but surround yourself in groups with people who are, who are where you want to be and they know what you want to know and elevate your experience so that you can achieve goals uh, that you've been wanting to achieve often for years, uh, maybe even a lifetime. As, as we wrap this up, practical next step, if you got a pen, make sure you write this down, is if you learned one thing, one thing, what was that? Write it down. And then tonight or tomorrow morning, but preferably right after this call, take action on that. So if you learn something like, huh, my network, you know, Kyle talked about, you know, his first deal was, was essentially through networking. Well, send a text, send, a, send an email, send a Facebook message to as many people as you know, saying, hey, I'm looking to structure a creative uh, deal. I'm starting to do lease options. Can you help me? And right away, some of you are going, well, I don't know the answer. If, if they say yes, what's my next step? Don't worry about that. You'll figure that out. Just take that step. Whatever you learn tonight, Take action on that because that's how you learn. It's like, um, you know, like when you read a book, oh, I was a good book, such a good book. You put it down, you don't do anything about it. You forget about actually some of the finer details that were so good. But when you take action on what you learned, you're going you're gonna to internalize that. And then now essentially what you're doing is you are, you're building a step for yourself. So whatever you wrote down tonight, when you do that, and and you get responses back and now you've got to think about okay how do i what's my next step after that you're building yourself a step which means that you're going from down here and you learn something new tonight you do it you're up a step now and then you'll learn something from that and then you'll go up you know another step and that's how you grow is by taking action on things that you learn each and every day because so often people will learn stuff and they just want to learn, 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 but never want to implement. And that's just spinning your wheels. You got to implement what you learn and don't learn too much all at once. Right. There's people who will follow five, 10 different real estate gurus. They've all got good advice, but at some point it's all going to just just collide and you're going to get frustrated because you're not seeing any results. Focus on one or two and start taking action in that direction. Thanks so much for jumping on. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. And um, yeah, we're going to be meeting next Monday night, same time. And we're going to be talking about uh, what we talked about tonight, but on the next level, essentially how to scale uh, to do multiple properties as no money down deals. Kyle, thanks so much for joining us and everyone else. Thank you so much. Take action tonight, and we'll see you here next week. Thank you. See ya. Thank you.